alphauniverse.com and the Alpha Universe podcast. And joining me now on our special live cast about the A7S III, we have Garrett King, Tiffany Nguyen, and Jess Santos, all members of the Sony Alpha Imaging Collective. And uh, I want to welcome you all and thank you for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Um, thank you. Yeah. Jess, I'd like to actually start by talking to you a little bit. Um, this camera, the A7S III, has been called um, just today, you know, a low light beast, a low light monster, a low light, you know, one of the be best low light cameras ever. Um, you do a lot in uh, at nighttime, do a lot of shooting astro. Talk to me about how this camera is going to figure in uh, to your workflow moving forward. Um, so I do a lot of stacking so I can do very high ISO and then I have to stack it to reduce noise. So being able to shoot at the high ISO and have very little noise might eliminate the need for stacking. I don't know. Um, and then also for time lapse, it's going to be just amazing to be able to work with something that's so sensitive to light and work with time lapses that are single shots strung together. So I'm really excited for that part of it. What is it about um, night photography and astrophotography that that excites you? So I've always been super fascinated with the stars. When I was little, I used to go and look at the stars and I like to learn all about the constellations and all the stories. And so being able to go out and capture those stars within my photos really inspires me and I like to include like some storytelling elements to that so just the experience of being out under stars and in dark places with very little light pollution and being able to look up and see Milky Way with your naked eye and then being able to photograph it and see what comes through the camera that you even can't see with your eye is really what I really enjoy doing and capturing. Um Tiffany, I know you're also uh, big into shooting a lot of Astro. Tell me about what it is about Astro that, uh, that you really like. I think what I like most about Astro is being able to really just step out in complete darkness and turn your camera at the sky and capture something that the naked eye can't see. And then being able to share that with someone else is just absolutely incredible to me. Um, there's so much out there that I feel like when you look out, can I just let your mind wander because you don't know what's out there and there's so much that's like unknown, undiscovered. And for me, that's, I find that really fascinating and I'm really intrigued by that. Yeah, I think that um, both you, Tiffany, and, and Jess, you talk about being able to see things that you just can't see any other way. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things that astrophotography really um, does for people. It's not a matter of, like, you're capturing something that you've seen. You're actually capturing something that your naked eye can't see at all. And when you've got a camera that can go to super high ISOs and be able to do this all like in, in one frame, it's a, it's a very different experience. And being able to see that image come up, that Milky Way shot, with all the stuff that you just can't see any other way. Like photography opens up that world to you. I think it's really, I think it's, that's what really gets me about Astro. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it almost gives you like a new pair of eyes shooting on a camera like this. Um, I mean, it's pretty crazy. Me and Jess, we were out shooting and we are both kind of practicing shooting like handheld shots with the Milky Way. They're like, oh, give it a shot. We're like, okay, sure, whatever. We'll just like entertain you guys and get this handheld Milky Way shot. And I remember us both standing there shooting. We're like, holy, like, these are actually <laughs> shots. Like, so little noise, so crisp and sharp. Is, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty awesome when we were out there. Yeah, and that's, that's a handheld Milky Way shot you're talking about. I mean, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Garrett. I remember. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Go ahead. When, sorry. No. Sorry. When you're shooting and you're using bright monitoring to set up your composition, and with the S3, like, you really didn't need bright monitoring. You could see through the live view display, and that was really pretty sweet. Yeah, and for those who don't know, bright monitoring is a really cool feature that allows you to, um, like, when you're shooting in really low, low light situations, be able to uh, see on the monitor much more clearly and actually get much crisper focus um, and composition than you can without it. And for Astro, to be able to see those pinpoint stars um, as, you're, as you're focusing um, and, and, and composing is just, it's a kind of a game-changing tool that is unique to mirrorless and is in the Sony Alpha cameras. 
Garrett, um, over to you. Let's talk a little about what you do and um, where you see the A7S III working for you uh, going forward. Sure. So I feel like I do a little bit of everything. Um, sometimes I'll do some nice stuff, but most of the time it's like blue hour uh, where it's getting a little bit uh, darker out and the low light definitely comes in handy. Um, as far as storytelling, it becomes a much bigger piece and an element to tie in all those different parts. So for me, I feel like it's just going to be a versatile uh, game changer, you know, in regards to all the elements that I can shoot it in. So, um, yeah, I mean, just being out there at night shooting that motocross scene was was pretty wild. Um, having that fully lit up, and then of course, um, just seeing all those different um, you know components come together at the end, uh, how everybody was shooting different angles at night, and uh, really wild to see. So I think for me, it's going to play uh, that same part and just different factors all across the board, whether I'm traveling or just staying put. Um, shooting stuff locally, uh, early morning, late night, uh, everything. So I'm pumped. Yeah, and we were talking about, um, or you're mentioning the motocross scene. That's in the way forward, the video that we watched a little bit earlier. And tell me what was what you were doing there when you were setting up that shot. Sure. So the guys basically they wanted to get a shot of him ramping uh, at night over this huge gap that they were doing during the day. So pretty much the same same setup, except they had to figure out a way to light that ramp up enough for him to be able to see and then have another gap at the end where he could come in and land. So a really scary feat, um, you know, stunt wise, but also having that ability to light everything up. He felt comfortable and did it. And then that's one aspect. And then being able to capture that on the other front is really wild. So um for us it's just about composing scene where he's going to be able to come out uh, of the light and then go back into the light uh, and then also you know physically being able to see on your camera those things happen too makes it a a big game changer because um, most of the time you're kind of firing in the blind hopefully you got something but um kind of being able to see that it was like almost daylight out there was huge um and tiffany going back to you um for astro as you move forward um how are you to think you how do you think you're going to be using the a7s3 <laughs> Really excited to add this one to my arsenal. Um, it's just another tool that I'm going to be using, um, to, especially like low light photography. I just think this camera is an absolute game changer for me. Um, I'm just really excited to not only use it for Astro, but also for travel videos as well. Um, storytelling, like Jess was saying, very, very excited about that. But I think just having the confidence of going out there, shooting, and being put in any sort of like shooting situation and knowing that. We're going to be able to get the best shots possible. I think I'm very excited for that. It just kind of opens up new doors for astrophotography and uh, also shooting open lights as well. Jess, you were talking uh, a little earlier about shooting time lapse and especially uh, nighttime time lapse, Milky Way time lapse. Um, talk to us about how you do that and how the A7S III is going to figure into that as you're moving, moving forward. So um, I usually shoot like around 300 consecutive frames, a little bit more if I want a longer time lapse. And I shoot them around 3200 ISO now on either the R4 or the R3. Um, but with the A7S III, I can push that ISO up and really get a much brighter image and use shorter, um, shorter shutter speed so that I can even use longer focal lengths because you have to adjust your shutter speed for the focal length so you don't get star trailing. So um, being able to use a higher ISO during time lapse and come out with a clean image is going to be really, really amazing. Can you explain that a little bit more about how you choose your shutter speed um, for a time lapse and based on the focal length of the lens? So um, the longer focal length you have, you have to use a shorter shutter speed because you get what's called star trailing. And basically, it's like where the stars look like little dashes. In time lapse, you can have slight star trailing. It's not a big deal, um, but but you don't want to have the little dashes because it will look strange in your time lapse or even in your single shots. So um, when you can zoom in and use maybe like 35 millimeters or something like that, being able to push the ISO up higher than 3200 will give you a shorter shutter speed, and you'll get rid of the star trailing in there. So. And so having that really, um, that, that high ISO capability really becomes a huge factor for that kind of uh, photography filmmaking. Yeah, it's really a balancing of settings. So if you can only shoot at 3200 ISO because past that you're going to get noise, so now you have to make a longer shutter speed of, say, 
15 seconds or something like that. And if you're shooting at like more zoomed in than 16, you're going to have a lot of star trailing happening. Um, so being able to push that ISO and then reduce the shutter speed, it really gives you more pinpoint stars. Garrett, going over to you, um, you know, you do a lot um, of photography really pushing uh, a color palette. You know, you, we, you and I have talked a lot about um, how you work with color. Um, we talked a little bit ago about the color science in the A7S III. Um, how do you see that plan for you moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely having that ability to have the 10-bit uh, color range and then, of course, being able to push it raw uh, with the monitor is going to be uh, next level for me. I've never really been able to um, edit a lot of raw footage. I mean, there's a lot of upper level, you know, cinema cameras that you're able to do that. But, um, to, you know, to have this on the go and constantly be able to push that and have that tailored more towards, you know, almost exactly how my photography looks and translate that into video is going to be huge. So, um, for me, I'm really pumped on that just because I've seen the limitations of, you know, 8-bit and certain other bits, you know, that, that come into range. And I don't know, I think sometimes you just kind of try to ignore it because that's just all you have at the moment, but this will definitely be um, a much bigger step up, so I'm pumped on that. Let's talk a little bit about how you shoot, um, how, you, how you work as a filmmaker. Um, tell me about your filmmaking. Sure. Um, kind of, I guess, more or less, it's a... Uh, it's a duality between photography and filmmaking. So, you know, whether I'm out, whatever story I'm supposed to tell, uh, it's usually paired with photos alongside the video and what makes sense to help them pair together. Um, so, you know, for instance, like if I'm directing something or I have a certain story, you know, lined up, I will always have a few stills in there to help, you know, capture and maybe more or less set that scene up and then go ahead and replicate that through video. Um, so it's more of a kind of a guerrilla running gun style uh, on the ground, but at the same time still planning out shots and making sure all these things make sense. Uh, and then kind of simplifying to make sure that the story is actually told and it's not just like uh, stuff with... Sorry, yeah. Fire alarm. What's going off? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is live TV without a net, so here we are. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just you know, th those two go together for me. Um, so this is going to be, you know, super fun. Also, it's in the same size as basically the S2 uh, in a sense. And like the R4, everybody is just like a smaller body. So to be able to carry that everywhere is going to be big. Yeah, let's talk a, a little bit more about that as a run and gun filmmaker, um, about how important it is to have this kind of capability in a really small package uh, versus, you know, a, a big professional camera. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of buddies carrying around a massive amount of gear, um, you know, to make certain scenes happen. It takes a whole crew. And, you know, I really have a massive amount of respect for those people, too, because of all the different components they're carrying around. I think this also changes the game for them, you know, having that ability to downsize everything and still have an amazing quality. So for me, that's a huge deal because um, I myself might not always have a big team. But uh, for instance, sorry. I don't know what is going on, uh, but uh, hopefully it's a false alarm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that that's going to be big for everyone because we always carry enough gear and lenses as it is. Um, you know, our backpacks are usually 40 pounds, it seems like, carrying it everywhere. So to be able to kind of like pick and choose um, because like the R4 and R3 and everything, all those are great for video as well. So to have like your main, um, you know, video camera and then also have your backup is going to be is going to be big as well so uh, to me it's just nice having everything kind of fit in the same you know area and not just have your one massive video camera that you're always having to carry you know backed up by you know several small ones so um, i think that consistency is big and you were mentioning that even though you do a lot of run and gun you are planning out your shots a lot um, but part of run and gun is um is taking advantage of the moment and being able to shoot you know what you have the opportunity to shoot, um, and sometimes that means setting up a longer shot, sometimes a shorter shot. Um, to be able to have something that's not going to, you know, overheat on you while you're doing that seems pretty important. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think pushing that boundary too is going to be massive, and I feel like they've done that. So, you know, having that heavy leg work already out of the way is nice and comforting to know that we're not the ones that are going to be experiencing problems or issues. That testing's been done throughout the years, so. 
I'm excited for that. Um, so, you know, heavily rely on a piece of equipment and not feel like you have to worry about it shutting down or failing or things like that, you know, because they pushed it. Um, Tiffany, going back to you for a second um, and shooting Astro, one of the neat things about this camera, having the flip out screen um, for shooting astrophotography where you can, um, you know, kind of set up your camera like on a tripod because you're probably, even though you did it, you're probably not going to do too much hand holding of the Milky Way. Um, but being able to have that on a tripod and be able to use that flip out screen and have that bright monitoring is, uh, is really a nice way to go about, go about shooting. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think astrophotography is already much more difficult um, than shooting during, during the daytime. And I think uh, having these extra tools for the new body is just going to be so much more helpful. Um, it can already be really overwhelming stepping out in complete darkness and, you know, you can't see things. Honestly, I think on the shoot, I, like, left my tripod mount. I, <laughs> I had to borrow Jess's tripod. It was just, like, one thing after another. But making sure that you have all these extra tools that are going to help you. I think it's just going to, it's going to make shooting a lot easier. Um, and again, just give you more confidence when you're out there. So, you know, you can get the best shot when you're out there. Yeah. And, uh, and for you, Jess, is that an important part of how you shoot, you know, being able to kind of have that perspective, use that flip out screen that way? Yeah. Cause I use a 12 millimeter lens a lot. And so getting really low to the ground, you kind of have to like lay on the ground with the screen on the R4 or the R3. So having it flip out and tilt up <clears throat> is really, really a game changer. I remember everyone asking for that at Condo and, and when we had, it just, we really wanted it. So we're really excited to have it. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, so, um, you know, all three of you kind of work in that, you know, realm of, of being, you know, visual storytellers, really doing new things with a camera. To have something like this where you can really push into these, uh, these different scenarios, these different, you know, push into the low light, be able to see things you can't normally see. It's like, it, it enables you to tell a story in a, in a totally different way. It's not really a question, it's kind of opening it up to, uh, to all of you. Um, Garrett, do you have a comment there? Oh, we may we may have lost Garrett's audio. Go ahead, say it one more time, just the last little bit. Just, just, just you know, being able to have a, a device that really enables you to to push a lot of limits and um, and and be able to see things that you you can't normally see is um, is a really big deal and enables you to kind of tell that story in a, in a new way. Sure. No, no, I agree. I think a lot of times as you become more experienced, you know, it is the gear that actually, you know will eliminate it's so annoying sorry guys I no it's all right may i have your attention I please can't. may i have your attention please well that's all right that's right garrett we'll go off of you for a second we'll, we'll mute you there and uh yeah we're having we're clearly having some issues this is one of those things that happens when you when you do things live <laughs>